welcome back to my channel for those of you who don't know me my name is Erin and I just graduated from my respiratory program two days ago so I literally just got done so for the past few weeks I've been getting a lot of comments and DMs of people asking me different questions like what do you learn in RT school are there things I can look at ahead of time to try to get ahead um, what kind of math problems do you have to do so I am here to answer all of those questions for you today hopefully if this video doesn't last too long I'm going to try to make it as short as I can you know straight to the point that way you don't have to sit and watch like a whole 20 minute thing so in order to keep things short let's just jump in so I do want to start off by saying that you know everybody's program is different and everybody's teacher will teach different things different ways so take what I say you know with a grain of salt I've tried to limit it to the things that you know of course every respiratory therapist is probably going to learn and it's very general I'm not going into any big detail or anything and definitely go by the books that your teachers tell you to get I know a majority of the respiratory programs use Egan's so that's the book that I use, but definitely get your values and your equations and everything from the book that you use because books, you know, they all have different things. Like they're all about the same, but they vary just a little bit. So I'm going to start off by telling you the things I did write a list because if I didn't, I would go crazy. I wrote down five yeah <laughs> five things that I'm pretty sure that you could go ahead and look at now it's pretty easy to grasp it's something that you're definitely gonna learn anyway and if you wanted to go ahead and get started on it these are the five things that you definitely can do so the first thing is the anatomy of the respiratory system you're definitely gonna need to know that from the mouth all the way to the diaphragm you're definitely definitely gonna need to know the different parts of the pharynx and the trachea and the different parts of the lungs so that is definitely something that you're going to want to look at and if i keep counting how many times i say definitely i'm probably going to lose my mind the second thing is oxygen delivery devices um you don't have to go too into detail with this your professor will let you know like what they want you to know about each thing but you could go ahead and look up like what they are and the leader flow the oxygen level that they give out everything like that so like the nasal cannula the non-rebreather mask simple mask vapotherm um high flow oxygen systems you know things like that something that's pretty easy not much to it and it's something small that will get you ahead so the third thing that I would suggest you could look up ahead of time are the respiratory medications simple things like albuterol zopinex mucomis things like that I wouldn't necessarily get too caught up in the uh in the dosages but definitely you could look up like the names of them and what they treat, what they're good for. And then you could also look up what an MDI is, what a DPI is, what a small volume NEB is, just things like that, just like a basic overview. I wouldn't go too far into detail with it. I would just look up the broad, just the broad spectrum of what the medications are, like the different names and what they're used for. So of course you're gonna need to know the pulmonary diseases, things like asthma, COPD, um, interstitial lung disease like pulmonary fibrosis, uh, crew, of course COVID is a new one, but just the different pulmonary diseases because you're going to be seeing everybody who has a pulmonary disease. So go ahead and just get a basic overview of what they are and what happens in your mind especially COPD you're going to be seeing that a lot and the very last thing you could go ahead and look up is normal values these I would definitely look in the book that your program tells you to get whether it be an Egan's book or something else um, like normal values such as like heart rate respiratory rate blood pressure um, maybe like the different renal values your electrolyte values and um like your blood count values like cbc white blood cells you know stuff like that you could look those up i wouldn't necessarily look up like the different pressures like the pulmonary capillary wedge pressures central venous pressure i mean i guess you could but i wouldn't but you could so normal values 
something simple, basically just memorization, something you can use with a flashcard. So that will be something easy. So these next six things are topics that you are definitely going to learn about, but I wouldn't necessarily look them up unless you just really, really want to. I wouldn't look them up ahead of time mainly because they can be very complicated and they use a lot of terminology that you may or may not be familiar with yet. So these are six topics that you are definitely going to learn about, but I wouldn't necessarily suggest you dive into just yet. So the number one topic, the big thing is mechanical ventilation. You are going to learn about that. Definitely you will be the one taking care of the critical patients on the ventilator. And that is definitely something that you are going to learn. It's a difficult topic. We had an entire semester dedicated to it and it's, 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 uh, it's a lot. So that's something that you're going to learn, but unless you just have to or you're really curious or you really think you can do it i wouldn't try to dive into it and try to understand it right now so the next thing is abgs while they are simple once you get the hang of them they're pretty difficult to understand especially the acute on chronic diseases like the copd where the values for them are abnormal for us but they're normal for them so that's their normal even though it's abnormal it's so those things still kind of confuse me like the acute on chronic still kind of confuses me um but it is something that you are definitely going to learn how to do because you will be responsible for gathering the blood sample unless the hospital just has lab do it you will be responsible for getting the blood sample and analyzing it so you're going to need to learn how to read them and interpret them so ekgs is the next thing ekg ecg um whatever you want to call it the heart strip i would not look that up prior to your teacher actually telling you what you need to know because it is difficult to read the ecg leads um it well i mean it wasn't for me i didn't have a hard time with it but my teacher actually like she did a good job explaining it my classmates some of them did struggle with it but there are good um videos that you can look at online like level up rn she does a really good job of explaining it um icu advantage he has really good videos too but i would just wait for school to learn those just because they are kind of confusing and some of them like the first second and third degree blocks like there's just little things that separate them and it's just it's hard for beginners to tell them apart so i would i would wait so the next things are non-invasive mechanical ventilation or cpap and bipap while again like abgs they are simple once you get the hang of them learning them initially is kind of confusing again just wait for your class but CPAP and BiPAP, again, just something that you are for sure going to learn about. And the last two things are specialty gases and specialty procedures. Specialty gases like inhaled nitric oxide and heliox, and then specialty procedures such as assisting with chest tubes, um, tracheostomies, chest x-rays, things like that. You're going to have to look at chest x-rays and learn how to interpret them. Sometimes I still have a hard time with them too just because I don't really know what I'm looking at, especially CTs. Like CTs, I'm like, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Is that a liver? Is that a lung? I don't know. I can't tell what a, a, C, a CT says. It's just, it's crazy. So the last part of this video are the equations. Now, this is not an exhaustive list of equations. If y'all's program is anything like mine, you will learn a lot of equations but the ones that i'm about to list out for you are the ones that we use the absolute most so these are just a few examples of the equations that we learned and that you probably will learn as well so the first one is the uh time left in a tank so you've got two different kinds of tanks you've got well the two main types of tanks you've got the h cylinder and the e cylinder and they have uh different amounts of oxygen in them so depending on the liter flow they'll last a certain amount of time so the equation to figure out 
how much time you have left in your tank is the tank factor times the PSI in the tank divided by the flow. The tank factor are just, you know, two different tank factors. The H is 3.14 and the E is 0 0.28. So you just divide those by the PSI left in the tank divided by divided by the flow that you had the tank set to and that'll give you the time in minutes that you have left in the tank. So this one is big for mechanical ventilation. It's the minute ventilation equation and this is just to see how much um like how many liters that they're inhaling in a minute. Is that how you describe it? I guess. It's how much how many liters of oxygen a patient breathes in a minute basically. So it's their tidal volume times their respiratory rate. Pretty easy. So the alveolar oxygen equation, this is one that we use all the time. This one and the next one, we use these all the time, all the time, daily. So you won't have to worry about forgetting it, you'll remember. Again, programs are different, you may not, but I'm pretty sure you will because these are kind of important. So the alveolar oxygen content equation is barometric pressure minus centimeters of water pressure times FiO2, which is fraction of expired oxygen, minus the PaCO2, what you get from an ABG, times 1.25. Do not be scared by that. It is super easy. The hardest thing about it is just remembering what the equation actually is. The barometric pressure and the centimeters of water pressure basically are the exact same every time. They're basically constants. So you you'll learn you'll learn in school, trust me. It's it's it is not as scary as it sounds. The next equation that we use daily, almost daily, multiple times a day is the ideal body weight equation and there's two of them, one for a male and one for a female, but they're basically the same, they're just a one number difference. For the males, it's 106 plus six times the inches that they are over five feet. So if they're five foot 11, it's six times 11 plus 106. And that's how you get their ideal body weight. For women, it's 105 plus five times the inches over five feet. So if they're like five four, it's five times four plus 105, and that's how you get their ideal body weight. And to calculate pounds into kilograms, because the ideal body weight, you will get it in pounds, how to transfer that to kilograms is just to divide it by 2.2. So that's easy. And then the last equation is, it's also simple. It's the oxygenation ratio or the PF ratio. It's basically just the, uh, I had to make sure I had the A right. It's the alveolar oxygen or P little AO2 divided by the FiO2. So it's the amount of oxygen that reads from the ABG divided by the amount of oxygen you have them on if you have them on supplemental oxygen. So yeah, that's basically it for this video. I, like I said, I tried to keep it really short. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to ask them. Let me know. I'll answer any questions the best I can. The male lady just looked at me like I was crazy. And again, this entire list is not exhaustive. You will learn so much more in respiratory school. These are just the things that like I know pretty much 99.9% .9 sure you will learn these things. So they're just to give you a heads up. And again, the list of things I told you to that I feel like you could go ahead and look up prior to starting school. Um, go ahead. I mean, they're pretty simple. If you want to look up the harder things, be my guest. Um, I wouldn't. That's just me. But you do you, boo-boo. If you feel like you can and you learn from it and you actually understand it, do bravo because I wouldn't. I wouldn't have understood any of it. So yeah, that's it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already subscribed and turn on the notifications so you know anytime I upload a video. Again, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!